so the next thing was we're going to go through and this is going to pop off and we're going to have this board here. So this, I kind of did some work already. If you notice on here, we had talked about we needed to have pull down resistors so that these get tied to ground, which is why we were seeing that, that floating issue there. Because these four pin or out of the four pins, only two were actually tied to ground, so they were kind of left alone. So this is the board we'll be using, and I, I like I said, I wired up some of this, not not nearly all of it, but yeah. this is going to drop in here, and we'll wire this up. See if you can get in here a little more. Oh, hairy leg! There we go. That's just what this stream needs is more of that. So we've got these wires here are going to connect to these four pins. These four pins over here actually are lined up to connect to these four four here. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is uh, we've got one of these done. We'll, we'll get the other one, but we've got these connectors that will... I have to put another connector on, but these will wire up to here. And we'll have one set going this way and then one set connecting to the top here. And we'll go ahead and... Mm -hmm fill this out so it's just going to be a lot of manual work so that's kind of where we're at so i guess to start out what i'm going to do because i absolutely hate that uh and i might as well get the part that i hate out of the way first is putting these connectors on because i'm absolutely 100 percent terrible at doing it doing connectors um, is rough it's <laughs> yeah i can never get i found a trick for it but i can never get my big fingers in there because these things are so small mm -hmm. I did find a trick which might be useful and I did do I did only ruin one of them so that's a plus but what I found is if you take and you use this you know one of these uh, breadboard pins and you just stick it on there it makes it a lot easier to get it in and out of the crimping tool mm. but there's also a possibility that and I had there's a possibility that I might be doing this wrong, <laughs> to be honest, because I don't really know what I'm doing with it. I should have probably separated those first, but for now that'll work. Mm, it's fine. Now you know they're at least all even. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just twist these. So you've have you done these connectors before then? Or put them I on? haven't done these are what JST connectors, well, right? Yeah, these are JST, but I mean DuPont, they're all the same tool with the crimping tool, I think. Yeah, I've done it for PWM cables. Okay. Which are even smaller and more of a pain. Yeah, I was gonna say. Now when you get done with them after you crimp them, do you solder them as well? Because there has been controversy over with people soldering crimp connectors. Some people are like adamantly against it. Some people are like whatever makes it hold. I, I kind of am the camp of like, you know, as long as you do it carefully, because it is, especially with these, you don't have much room for error, right? So I'm going to yeah. zoom in here. You don't have much room for error in that, you know, after you get that wire on here, you have like a very small amount. It's very hard to even get the soldering iron in there, to be honest. Um, we have not. We've mainly just gone with crimping and, you know, doing it about five or six times because... Yeah. New people doing it often in training. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, as long as they pass the gentle pull test, you know, there's, I say gentle, yeah. not that gentle. I, I guess the thing is for me, like most of the stuff I do when I'm doing, when I'm doing not so much these connectors, but like butt connectors and stuff. And I think that's where most of the people have, have controversy over it is automotive. And with the automotive, you're definitely rattling things around a lot more than you are. Like, this thing's probably not going to move. No, probably much. not that significantly. But, I mean, yeah, even so, so, like, for the PWM cables we've done on a robot, that robot moves around and gets hit more than an automotive, would I would think. Yeah, that's true. Around, like, we've had cases where we've completely spun screws and stuff out again, mm. you know, that are in, you know, an inch or two yeah. through the course of a match. So... Okay, that's one down. This is why I hate this process. It takes a long time to like right. line these up, and then you know it's it's not meant for in my opinion. People with big fingers. Yeah. So we have we run off of giant twelve volt batteries for robotics. Yeah. So we have the huge like I forget know. what size the cable is, but like it's the huge cable where we actually need to use a hydraulic crimper <laughs> to put yeah. the ends of it on. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> that thing's a lot of fun to use. <laughs> yeah, I've used those as well for like uh, car audio. I don't know if there are better ones or ones that are easier to use. This is the same style we use for the PWM cables. Yeah, I think they're a standard. Uh, from what I've heard, the, you know, branding and quality does play into it a little bit. We're supposed to be getting a nicer quality one mm. for the robotics team instead of just what yeah, the school buys. Yeah. If they're generic, whatever. Well, this one is, this one's a generic, uh, this is definitely just a generic. I bought a cheap kit from Amazon. So, mm. I mean, and if you're just starting out with these, you know, yeah, I wouldn't recommend cheap, spending a lot. Yeah, I mean, especially if it's something you're not going to use often. I bought them for when I was doing some work with my 3D printer. And that's probably a future project we'll see, to be honest. Um, not working on my 3D printer, but when I was actually... I have a 3D printer that I was actually building just from scratch. Printing out the parts and building from scratch. And that one's short here oh, because I ruined okay. one yesterday. Yeah, so having these connectors there is pretty much a must for, like, when you get to some parts of it. Just because it makes it a lot easier. It's a nice Grab. kid. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I got this. This came with, well, it is a nice kit, but this is a pain in the butt, these connectors. Because yeah. you never get them back in there. I got this one. I think I got, I think I got the crimper, the GST, and this one here, which is the... DuPont connector kit. Oh, uh, yeah. Those, so that's what I'm calling PWMs. Yeah. That's the... Oh, gotcha. Yeah, those are just like the straight pins. Like, you know, you've got yep. on this on the pin header. Yeah, that's more of what we've done recently. Yeah. Um, because we need to use them for our analog encoders. We mm. use a swerve drive, which is relatively unique where your wheels can spin independently 360 degrees. Hmm. But you need to know you know where in that rotation it is so that your robot goes the right direction. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Final one. All right. So that's pretty much the easy part. <laughs> now this is the fun part. Yeah, I, I was saying to myself yesterday when I was doing the other connector, I really should go. I have, I don't know whether it would work or not. I haven't tried it. Actually, I'm doing this backwards. Where is this? Let's do this this way. Anyway, the, I have a old school insertion tool for DB connectors. Hmm. Like, you know, DB9, DB25 connectors, serial yeah. connectors. And I was wondering if that would actually work to push these pins in because I don't have anything. I was using like this, but I couldn't get these. I couldn't get these to seat yesterday. Although these are going in a lot better. So maybe the other connector I had was bad or I just did a really bad job with the other one yesterday. I mean, that is possible too. Yeah, see, this doesn't want to go in at all. This is the problem I was having. But maybe it's not lined up here. The DuPont connectors are definitely easier, I feel, when it comes to this part. Because they're just round. I think they have that I feel, yeah. Yeah, these, I don't know why, are a little picky about, yeah, snapping into place for some reason. So, oh, jeez. That's probably... Ooh. Not good. Okay, so that's in there. So now the question is, will this plug in here correctly? And the answer is probably not the first time. Oh, actually, that worked pretty well. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Well, there we go. We've got the two wires there, so we can wire this up now. Let's see here. Actually, so there's a couple wires we've got to add here, too. Obviously, we've got to take these wires. We've just got to solder these to here. Mm -hmm. And we've just got to solder wires from there to here. But we need to take, I think, this one. The ground. It says roll. Yeah, it's this one. It's the second pin. Ground over to here. 
which is mm -hmm. no big deal. I'll use this. I've got this here. Handy. See? Good use for your 3D prints that don't work out right. <laughs> use them on stream to hold things up. Put this here so it's a little easier to, to get to these pins here. And grab the old handy dandy soldering iron. And I was talking to my friend and I actually don't know... I don't know whether we had the temperature set correctly for this. I don't know. My soldering iron's not fancy enough to have a temperature. It just is plugged in and on or unplugged and off. <laughs> We're just going to go with... It's set to 300. I'll have to adjust it later. But apparently... The temperature should be around 315 or so for the solder yeah. I have. So we were saying it might be a little low. It's not doing bad. Normally you get like dull solder or whatever if you're having problems. And I'm not having any problems. Yeah, the ones that are there look like they're pretty good. Yeah, so it, it came out pretty good. I got this board that we did about 15 years ago that I'll probably you'll probably see again in a future video here. But this is a, this is a board... Yeah. This one looks a lot better than that. <laughs> I've gotten better at my soldering over time. <laughs> You'll see that board again in the future, hopefully, because that is a stepper driver. In our first video, I think, we talked about shift registers. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about we would have to maybe use one to read the keypad if the matrix didn't work, but it ended up working out, so it didn't matter. So we can use that as an example of using a stepper driver I'm sorry, using a shift register to drive a stepper motor. And you communicate it through, you communicate to the shift register through serial. But the problem is, it's been so long that I need to actually remember the theory behind how that works. So I'm going to have to go back and look at it. In fact, I've got the data sheet sitting here on my desk because I'm going to have to remember how it all fits together and goes together there. So that should all be connected there. So we'll go ahead and clip these leads. Oh, well, that's probably not good. See what we did wrong there? Oh, yeah, the board is not even. <laughs> <laughs> we can fix that. No big deal. We'll just go ahead and mm, we'll fix that too. So now we're kind of even. But we're also bridged here. So we can fix that. And I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. Oh, maybe it must have been sitting on the. Alright. Well, we'll solve it. No big deal. The hard part is trying to get my finger in here and show it on camera at the same time what we're doing. But, you know, mistakes do happen. No big deal. If I hadn't made mistakes, you guys wouldn't learn how to fix them. <laughs> That's why I always say, learn by my mistakes. Someone should. I rarely do. So this is just a vacuum soldering iron, or a, uh, what do you call it, vacuum desolderer? We'll just go through here. And, yeah, we're good. Okay. So we got that fixed. You could also do that if if you're patient enough, which I usually am. I like this iron. This is kind of nice. The nice thing about it, I, I think I talked about it. I think I already talked about it in the video, but I'll, I'll mention it again. It's USB-C powered. So what's nice about that is it just requires like quick charge three, mm -hmm. which means it can be very portable. Yeah. So it's very handy for, I always end up out in the car working on things or, you know, out and about. And it's nice to just be able to do, like what I'm doing here is I'm actually running it off a USB-C power pack. Mm. So you can just run it that way and it works great. You just take it with you. Okay, so we got that. This is going to be not fun. I actually, what I'm going to do, rather than use that for this, I'm going to steal some of these old... I got some of these old breadboard connector here. Mm. Actually, those red ones are probably the best. Yeah, that's long enough. I'll clip it to use. Yep. 
Yeah, exactly. Clip it into two. And then I just pulled out some extra just in case. Just uh, straighten that out. Yeah, normally I have some thin gauge hookup wire, but for some reason I don't. I couldn't find it before the video, and I was thinking that that green wire there could work. But that is too thick of a gauge. I, th I thought that was more insulation than it is wire. Yeah, usually it's a little, little better. So let's just double check here. Yeah, we are lined up two through five. And I think, like I said before, you know, if we screw up with the pins, unless you really, really screw up, you can just change the code mm -hmm. to use the new pins. So it's not the end of the world, but it is ideal if we just make it do what it's intended to do. All right. So, come on, stay still. <laughs> Action soldering. Did it not heat up again or turn on? No, it shut off. Oh. Yeah, the battery shut off. There we go. That is one nice thing. It does heat up and cool down quick. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I actually have to get you to send that to me because I could see, you know, traveling to competitions and stuff. They generally have little workshops set up at each but being able just to quickly throw something like that in a bag and use it in the middle of the pits. <laughs> it's a TS-80, which I think they've got new versions of it out. It Originally, they came out with a TS-100, and then the TS-80 came out afterwards, I believe. I don't know why the ordering, but that's just how they did it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then the... I don't know which one they have now. When I looked on Amazon, I didn't see this one any longer. But again, that doesn't mean it's not available. It just could be that they're out right now, too. Shortage on everything due to the pandemic? Yeah, it's pretty much everything everywhere still. You would think by now, you know, it would be a little easier. It is not the best. The nice thing about this is... This is actually cool to the touch. And this was the part when I did my soldering station and everyone, the first thing everyone asked me was, is that going to melt? Because it's PLA. And it's like, well, this part, even though this is 300 degrees Celsius, this part's actually cold enough for me to touch so you can actually rotate it. Nice. So it only gets warm after you've had it, you know, on for a little while. Yeah. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is I think I am going to turn this off and let this cool down a minute because I think I'm going to switch tips. I have a conical tip that's probably going to be easier to get in there. If you're going to get a soldering iron, no matter what you get, whether you get a plug one, a cordless, you know, something like this, make sure it's temperature controlled. Yeah, mine is not. It's just, you know, it's yeah. on. It heats up to whatever temperature it is. You can't control any of it. That is that is the difference. And I'm going to say probably this isn't, you know, when I was showing this, this probably isn't so much skill as it. This was a 15 watt pencil soldering iron from Radio Shack, I believe. And this is a temperature controlled soldering iron so that you know what temperature you're working on things. New soldering iron tip smell. Burn all of that carbon off. Burn all that manufacturing oil or whatever's on there off. So let's just go ahead and do that and then clean it off. Okay, that should help us a bit. Oh yeah, it's a lot easier to get in there now. Good, okay. Do, 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 do. What I need to do, I've got these little tweezers in the other room. That's probably what I need to get instead of these. Instead of the big needle nose. <laughs> yeah, but they're in the other room and I'm here. And if I could get my hands to it. Come on, man. This is not going to go well, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I know exactly how this is going to go. And that's exactly what I knew was going to happen. Okay. Two down, two more till uh, we can clear ourselves of disaster here. Well, for that side at least, we still have... Yeah, but these are the hardest ones on here, I think. Yeah, sure. I guess the tie down not be that bad. Yeah, the other one's fairly easy. It's just this one's pretty bad. Just because it's, it's four in rapid succession mm -hmm. against old man fingers with non-steady hands. Basically what that is. Do-do-do-do. Got that on there. Kind of have to burn my finger. Do, 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 do. Do not do that. 
If you could just not pin, that would be great. Yeah. There we go. That is really close. Yeah, check something real quick. Got a little continuity tester. Just verify. Oh, good lord, what is all that? Leave it out in the garage. Okay, that's good. Well, they're not touching yet, so that's a good sign. No shorts yet, except the ones I got on. Everyone's going to be thankful for those when I move that camera again. Here it is. Lost my last little pin here. And this one we're going to treat ourselves and put it on the outside, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Not ideal, but it's fine. Uh, off the other end. All right. Did I not do this one? I guess I did not. Side. No, I didn't do this side. I thought you were planning on pushing the one side and then going back. No, I I literally just forgot to do this one. <laughs> Come on. Get down the line. Wait, isn't pin five giving us anything? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh. Check that one. Actually, the camera can probably see this better than I can, to be honest. I mean, you know, if you focus it. Yeah, that's not... There's no gap there. No. Or there, there is a gap there. I don't think it is touching. I think it just shines... Well, I mean... A little too to the left was close. Yeah, it's a little close, but I don't think it's... We'll find out. Survey says. It looks separated. Gotta keep them separated. Is this? Well, these aren't even connected. What's going on? It says they're not. So let's check this side. Looks good there. Cool. We awesome. are wired up. Put these boy. Um, do you want to do the pull down to ground? Oh, yeah. Well, that turned off anyway. Let me, uh, for that, I'll go ahead and use this wire probably. I think I got enough here. I'm just going to cheat and come across. That'll probably be the easiest. Let's make sure it's pin two. Yeah, pin two. Let's slide that under there. This is not how you would normally want to do this. I will preface it with that. I'm doing this oddly. It will work. I say that now, so it doesn't work. <laughs> and then we'll know I was wrong. No pinch. What I should do is we're just going to tack that there. And yeah, there we go. Let that flow through. Get a good connection. Not really how you want to do a connection, to be honest, but. I mean, it's fine for this. Um, there we go. So that should be good. So this should work now. So let's just verify ground. And this should actually read. 
It's not going to get it on. Oh. Put that back there. Just move this so you can see, sort of. You can see both, right? Yeah. Oh, it's a little off kilter, but I guess we could do that. There we go. So we should be able to read, yeah, 10K. Oh, come on. 10K. 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 Cool. Which is good because they're 10K resistors. So I guess our board is done. The only thing we've got left to do with this... We've got to model it so that it'll fit in the base. Mm -hmm. And then after that, hook it to this. And yep. we're done. It'll work then. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Hey viewers, this is Pyrotis here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. And if you didn't, let us know in a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to get notifications for our future videos like this, and we'll hopefully see you in the next video.